Here, for two and a half years, the Hallam reactor fuel was prepared for reprocessing. The job was completed just one month ago. To get here, the fuel had to be trucked up the same steep, winding road this liquid oxygen truck is climbing, right past a couple of large mobile home parks where business is brisk and the lots are filling up fast. But in zoning the land, Los Angeles County paid no attention to the nuclear installation just over the hill in Ventura County. Here's the man in charge of environmental quality. Have you ever been contacted by either the state or the federal government or anybody else about what was going on at Atomics no. International? Do you feel from the contacts that you've had uh, in the last day or so that you should have been? Probably as a matter of information, it would, uh, it would have been nice. We talked to some of the people who lived nearest to Atomics International. None of them had ever been told what goes on there before. Their reactions were all quite different. I wouldn't buy if I knew that, okay? I mean, I really feel that strongly. But I was with the AEC up there in Richmond, Washington uh, for 19 years, and uh, all of this hoopla that you hear about, uh, uh, well, how dangerous it is and so forth and so on, is just a lot of hogwash. I've never been afraid of any of it. That I think anyone who has a fear of anything like that, that's as prominent as these places are, I think they should be told and given a chance to say, no, I don't want to live near. About 25 tons of the highly radioactive Hallam reactor fuel was shipped to Atomics International in a truck that looked something like this. It came one ton at a time over two and a half years. At each time the truck brought a ton here, it took another ton back to complete the reprocessing at Savannah River. 25 round trips across the country, 50 crossings in all, down the road to Topanga Canyon Boulevard. Department of Energy cannot reveal the exact route, but a spokesman told us to figure it took the logical freeway. That means down the Ventura, through the valley to the Golden State, through downtown Los Angeles to Interstate 10 and east, back and forth, a ton at a time, for two and a half years. Is it a good idea to have them going through the freeways in the middle of Los Angeles? Uh, there's always a better way to transport radioactive material. If we could find a spot that was totally isolated of, of uh, people and, uh, and property, it would certainly be better than that. But uh, considering that these routes usually are selected uh, at times of the day when you have minimum traffic, it's probably the best compromise. The Department of Energy is very proud of the casks it uses to transport high-level radioactive fuel. This government film shows the kinds of tests that they're put to. They are smashed into concrete walls at 60 and 84 miles per hour. They are run into by speeding locomotives. They are carried on train cars that crash into concrete walls, all with no damage, nothing leaks out, according to the film. They are even subjected to an airplane fuel fire, 1,400 degrees the temperature outside the cask, 300 degrees inside, proving the insulation would prevent the fuel from melting. The government has a lot riding on the safety of these casks. By 1990, it figures there will be 3,500 shipments of high-level radioactive fuel every year, and some of them will be coming to Atomics International. Already, the hot cell is being prepared for fuel from the Fermi reactor in Detroit. That was a $130 million breeder reactor shut down before it ever produced any power because of a meltdown that came within seconds of getting out of control. The Fermi fuel is expected to get here next year. public disclosure in plain English of what's to be done and why I think is absolutely essential for not just the acceptability of nuclear power expansion but the acceptability of what has to be done now even if every reactor is shut down tomorrow. We've been able to show you in detail the fuel rod melting at Santa Susana, even the damaged reactor core, because the Department of Energy has a library of films and documents to support them at Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Many of them are public records now, but you don't very often see them. So few people know about incidents like the explosion at this reactor on the desert near Idaho Falls, which killed three people in 1961. One man was impaled on the ceiling of the reactor building. This reactor had to be buried, and the desert here will be contaminated for centuries to come. The Idaho reactor was built for the military. There have not been any similar incidents in the civilian reactor program. But there have been plenty of problems. 
In the same year as the Idaho incident, there was little publicity when the Supreme Court allowed the Fermi reactor to go into operation near Detroit, a major population center, even though it was argued that all the safety questions had not been resolved. Five years later, it came very close to melting down. It's now being converted to coal. The experimental SRE at Santa Susana was the first reactor to sell electrical power. There was a lot of publicity for that in 1957. But in 1959, when it suffered its fuel rod melting, the general public was not informed. And it's taken till this week, 20 years later, for the details to be widely broadcast. And once they were known, it turned out there was room for disagreement on how the accident was handled. Slipshod operation, I guess, is the way I would describe it. Uh, and. Uh, uh, and just uh, uh, sort of a damn the torpedoes full speed ahead attitude. Certainly people were following that reactor all the time. Uh, it did not appear to be a hazard to the public or to our employees. And uh, in retrospect, it wasn't a hazard to our employees or public. And we put the plant back on the line. But the reason for looking at old accidents like the one at the SRE is to get perspective on new controversies. Unit 4 has learned that there is controversy within the government itself right now over how radioactive fuel should be transported. The Department of Energy says the containers used to ship it are so strong that it's safe to use major freeways. It hands out this film to prove its point. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission says the casks are strong all right, but that shipments on freeways are still vulnerable to hijacking. The NRC has turned down proposed fuel transportation routes to and from the San Onofre reactors because those routes would go through heavily populated areas. And the Diablo Canyon plant near San Luis Obispo has been held up because of a controversy, this time with the NRC initially pushing ahead, despite findings by the U.S. Geological Survey that a nearby earthquake fault might produce shakes stronger than the plant originally was designed to withstand. These and other controversies become more heated as they get better known, because the potential risks are so great. How great? Here's another member of the Commission on Three Mile Island. We're going to be debating that forever. I, I view nuclear power as zero times infinity. And what I mean by that is the chances of a serious accident are extremely remote. But what's troubling is that it's only one accident that extends toward infinity in terms of the kind of the damage and, and the catastrophic potential. Uh, Three Mile Island, I view as a very serious accident. People say nobody was hurt. That's not the issue. That plant was totally out of control. All the King's men uh, were totally confused. Uh, the core meltdown had begun before that plant was brought back under control. And that, to me, says a lot. Uh, we'll never have a perfect fix on uh, what that risk is. And the question is, can we assure ourselves that it's small enough to be worth taking?